So good afternoon everyone. So this is another lesson of our subject, the teacher and the school curriculum. So our previous lesson, which is the lesson eight, we talk about the implementation of the school curriculum. So we say that the teaching activity is like implementing a minuscule curriculum. So a daily lesson is based on planned or written curriculum, just like we've um discussed last time which will be put to action by the teacher in the classroom so before the lesson ends the teacher must find out if the students have truly learned so let us see how this process will be shown so our topic for today is implementing a curriculum daily in the classroom so as prospective teachers you should prepare lesson plans that will comply with the necessary components as by the department of education so if you will be hired in the private schools. Uh, you may have different uh, lesson plan format, but the fundamental parts will be the same. So before the class begins every day, a teacher must have written a lesson plan. So uh, we will discuss now the main parts of the lesson plan. So number one, parts of the lesson plan is what we call the intended learning outcomes or the ILO. So the ILO is these are the desired learning that will be the focus of the lesson. So this is what we call the objectives. So we have here the Bloom's taxonomy. So this is the old version. It comprises of evaluation, synthesis, analysis, application, comprehension, and the knowledge. So it was revised by the Anderson into a new version of Bloom's taxonomy. So it comprises of creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding, and remembering. So somehow the two are similar. However, um, as you can see here, the highest level of the cognition in the revised version is the creating while on the old version it is the evaluation so take note that the original version is stated as the um as a noun so just like here evaluation synthesis well on the new version by anderson it is stated as verb this implies more active form of thinking so this uh there are three majors uh, changes in the revised taxonomy. So these are the number one is changing the names in the six categories from nouns to verbs, just like what I said earlier. Um, second one is rearranging these categories, and the third one is establishing the levels of the knowledge level in the original version. So in the original version, the highest value is the evaluation, while on the new version, the highest value is the creating so let us uh, proceed to the cognitive categories with the example keywords this is take note this is the new version by anderson so number one is remembering so this is recall or retrieve previous learned information so always remember recall and retrieve previous learned so that is remembering so you can use the keywords defines describe identifies and labels or etc Second one is we have what we call the understanding. This comprehend meaning, translation, state problem in own words, making meaning. For example, comprehends, explain, distinguishes, and estimates. So, for example, you are making your objectives in under the remembering. So, define the definition of the old version of Bloom's taxonomy. In understanding, explains or distinguishes the differences from the old version of Bloom's taxonomy to the new version of Bloom's taxonomy. Next is applying. So use concept in a new situation applies what has been learned in a new situation. For example, applies, changes, computes, and operates. So before I for uh before I forget this, um when you are making the ILO your ILO should presented as a cognitive, affective, and a, and a psychomotor. So, for example, in applying, um, it, it, it this is included in the psychomotor objectives. 
In analyzing, this is separate materials or concepts into component parts so that the organization is clear. So, distinguishes between the between facts and inferences. So, the keyword here is breakdown, compares, contrast, and diagram. The next one is the, we have here the evaluating. So, make judgments about the value of the ideas or materials. The keyword here is appraises, compares, criticizes, def defends, and describes. Last is the highest value, which is the creating, build a structure or pattern from a various statements. So, put parts together to create a whole to make new meaning and structure. So, the keyword here is composes, compiles, designs, and generates. So those are the six categories under the Bloom's taxonomy. So in writing objectives or the intended learning outcomes, it is always recommended that the more higher order thinking skills or what we call the hats should be developed and less of how of the low lower order thinking skills or the LATS for the learners. So the low level categories will develop LATS and thinking skills progress as the categories moves higher. So uh, what are those categories that included in the HATS? So those are the creating, evaluating, analyzing, and the lower order thinking skills or the remembering, understanding, and the applying. So, another revision is the expansion of the concept of the knowledge, which was not given emphasis nor discussed thoroughly before. So, let us uh, discuss the levels of knowledge. So, number one is we have the factual knowledge. So, this includes the ideas, specific data, or information. Uh, that's, that is why we call it factual. Conceptual knowledge, is these are the words or ideas known common name. Features, multiple specific examples, which may be either be concrete or abstract. So when we are talking about the concept, these are the facts that interrelate with each other to function together. So the third one is we have the procedural um, knowledge. This is how things work, step-by-step -step actions, methods, or inquiry. Uh, from its key word or key term that is procedures. In factual, these are the ideas or the specific data lang. When we say concept, these are the words or ideas known, common name or features or multiple specific examples. So those are the concepts. So procedural, uh, you are describing the procedures or the step-by-step -step actions. Number four is the metacognitive knowledge. So the knowledge of cognition in general. Awareness of knowledge of one's own cognition and thinking about thinking. So this is your um, general knowledge about something. So that is what we call the metacognitive knowledge. So the intended learning outcomes or the ILO should be written in the SMART. So these are the specific, measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and time-bound. So how to do this? So we need to start from um, identifying or writing the subject matter or the content or what we call the SM. This comes from the body of knowledge that will, that will be learned through the guidance of the teacher. So subject matter is the what in teaching. In a plan, this is followed by the References. So, always remember the subject matter or the SM, it should be answerable by the question of what. Next is procedure or methods and strategies. So, this is the crux of curriculum implementation. So, how a teacher will put life to the intended outcomes and the subject matter to be used depends on this um, component. Next is students have different learning styles. So we have what we call the multiple intelligence theory by Howard Gardner. So teachers have to take into consideration that the different strategies should match with the learning styles of the students. So there are many classifications of learning styles. So um, just like what I've said, that is the multiple intel intelligence theory by Howard. Gardner. So this implies several learning styles, but 
for our lesson, we will just focus on the three learning styles, which are visual, auditory, and the kinesthetic. So these three preferred styles can help teachers choose the method and the materials they will use. In visual, we use as graphs, charts, pictures, tends to remember things that are written in a form. So this is these are the tips for teachers about learners when it comes to visual. So uh, you, uh, your lesson, you need to turn it into pictures, diagrams, maps, and uh, because the learners learn the big picture first, then details, and make mind maps and concept maps. The second one is we have the auditory. So it recalls information through hearing and speaking. So it prefers to be told how to do things orally and learners are allowed. So uh, record the example of this is the record lectures and listen to this. So repeat materials out loud like for example uh, like parrots and read aloud so next is the kinesthetics so it prefers hands-on approach demonstrate how to do rather than explain like group work with hands-on uh, minds on so the learners or the students learn something while doing another thing so for example eating while studying so work while studying like field work and do many things at one point so next is the teaching and learning must be supported by instructional materials. So considering the teaching methodologies and the learning styles, the different support materials should be varied also. To, so this will ensure that the individual differences will be considered. So instructional materials should complement visual, auditory, and uh, tactile or a combination of the three. So, what instructional support materials will the teachers use according to the learning styles and the outcomes to be achieved? So, these are the tips or some of the guidelines. So, use of direct purposeful experience through learning by doing retains almost all the learning outcomes. So, 90% of learning is retained. So, for example, field trip, field study, community immersion, and practice teaching. Particip participation in class activities is another example. Discussion, reporting, and similar activities. So, uh, for examples are the small group discussion, bus discussion, and individual. So, 70% of learning is remembered. So, so, passive participation, as in watching movie, viewing exhibit, watching demonstration, 50% of what has been communicated. By just looking at still pictures, for example, paintings, illustration, drawings, only 30% of the material content will allow the retention. By hearing, as in lecture, sermon, monologues, only 20% is remembered. So by reading, will ensure 10% of uh, remembering of the materials. So the next one is methods and materials must implement the plan. So um, it must involve the taking action. Last is finding out what has been achieved. So this is the assessing the achieved outcome. So at the end of the activity, so the teacher will find out if the intended learning outcomes have been converted into achieved learning outcomes or the ALO. So again, that is the achieved learning outcomes. So tests and other tools are utilized at the end of the lesson to identify this. So what knowledge, proper understanding, and the performance performance are demonstrated by the learners. So the rule of thumb is what has been taught should be measured to find out if the intended outcomes set at the beginning has been achieved. So mo more detailed discussion will be found in the uh, module or the evaluation of the curriculum which is our next topic so that is the instructional media so also referred as the media technology or the learning technology or the simply technology so i will discuss the instructional media um more or go deeper in this topic 
in our next discussion. Okay? As well as the factors in the technology selection, the role of technology in the curriculum delivery, and the TPAC. Okay, so the curriculum stakeholders as well as and the other stakeholders in the curriculum implementation and so much. So we will just the our quiz will cover uh, mostly on the on how the parts of the lesson planning. So thank you very much. See you on the next topic.